government's energy secretary is considering uh, removing four billion pounds of green levies from household electricity bills which she says would save the average household around 142 pounds a year now the charges are added to bills to help fund investment in renewable energies as part of the plan to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2050 but would you prefer to have a little bit more money in your pocket or are you happy uh, to be investing in a greener future for your country. I mean, everyone would like a little extra money in their pocket, but if that means we're breathing polluted air in the future, Esther, it doesn't seem like a good deal, does it? Well, I mean, the question is, first of all, I'd, I'd prefer them to cut uh, fuel duty because almost half, I think over half of what we pay at the pump is taxes. Um, but they're not going to do that because the Treasury gets too much money from it and they don't want to say it. Uh, but the thing is, a lot with a lot of the sort of climate green taxes, there we haven't they haven't articulated a plan, right? You wouldn't want a, a company this way, but somehow it's acceptable to run the country this way. What is the plan? Okay, if we're going to have like a green sovereign fund in this country, map out exactly what that money is going to be spent on. Like, like I, I I often cite the city in Germany, Cologne, for instance. They levy green taxes on on the people that live in that city, but they've also put up air filtration systems on at the end of each street and saying, okay, the money that you're paying, you can visibly see it's going to making your air cleaner. We don't have that. We know that a lot of the money that goes from these green taxes is, is to plug holes in, in our debt, basically, and then a little bit of it goes to companies that are claiming subsidies for green energy. That's not good enough. So we need to, to physically shoot. see what it is for. They need to have a plan and say, by this time, this is what the money has done. This is what it's gone to. And they're not going to do it. By the way, and a lot of the plans that they come up with will be unconvincing because actually, if you're trying to make the argument for us to transition from fossil fuels, I've made this case again. The reasons why we use fossil fuels is because they're cheap, they're plentiful, and they're reliable. Unless you have an alternative that is cheaper, more plentiful, and more reliable, no one will transition. Not us, not the polluting Indonesia, Indians, Chinese, no one else. But Unless we invest, Matt, we're not going to be able to do that, are we? We had a really interesting caller earlier in the last segment, which overlapped with what we're mm -hmm. talking about now. That was from Janice. And she was concerned that we put the cart before the horse on net zero. And there is an extent to which that's right. Because sensible grown-up people in this country realise that we are facing, not just here, obviously, but around the world, a climate crisis. And the action really does need to be taken. Otherwise, it's going to cost us all more in all sorts of ways further down the line. But because this Tory government, rightly, I think, signed into law the Net Zero Pledge, mm -hmm. it means there's a sense that we are scrambling to work out how we get there. And there are two problems for that. One is that you can create bad policy, and the other is that you do risk punishing those on the lowest incomes. We have to make sure that this is done as equitably as possible. But there has been something of a backlash on the hard right against net zero. Mm -hmm. I think it's populist and I think it's misguided, but it is at least focusing minds. I don't, okay. think, I don't think the backlash though is hard right. I think it's it's more about the, the, just the sheer economics of it because we know that it will be the majority of people that will bear the brunt are people that are working class, right? You don't. We haven't seen people, uh, the government ban private jets for celebrities and all. We haven't seen the people that really that that often complain about about uh, you know the, the climate crisis um, actually give anything up. You ha you literally have celebrities flying from LA to London but in a private jet. Aren't in a, in a, in a so private who, jet. They're not but, making but, policy. But you're missing the point. But there's the very people, tiny percentage. But of that's celebrities but, but this, and private but, jets. I think that's but a private jets jet pollute 14 times more than commercial. And they aircraft. shouldn't be using them, but, but they're they not have, making but, but the policies. The, but that's the point. The government hasn't banned them. So why are you, why why aren't you going for the easier, smaller fish and then coming for the rest of the public? That doesn't make sense. It's incoherent. There's nothing far right about that. It's just it, madness. I didn't say the policy in itself. The 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 the, 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 the ideas isn't are, far, are far right, right but it they're is not. coming from the far right. There, yeah. It's not. It's coming from there's people actually, who don't There's actually, in the little notes we give you, there's a graph that you can actually see the decline in uh, our emissions over the last, uh, what, well, I think it's 30 years, and You know that the majority years. of and that actually, decline is because of the modernisation of cars. Cars have gotten so much better. The technology has improved so, so much. So then we need to invest in making sure that that, that continues well, because, to But the thing is, again, the plans that they're, they're proposing do not work because the plans well, for that are, are electric vehicles. And electric vehicles are actually not very environmentally friendly. They pollute waterways. The, the 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 mining of lithium batteries is first of all uses child not to labor. Mention where and, is the electricity coming exactly. from? Exactly. So the, the alternatives that they're suggesting are not viable. This is the problem. Well, you're, being a bit, <laughs> you're being a bit sweeping there. We have made some progress, both in terms of the energy that we use, not nearly enough, because I think, as you said earlier, we're still using something like 80% of our energy as fossil <coughs> fuels. But in terms of what we're generating, 
we are actually generating, I think, a majority of electricity of, of energy in this country from renewables or no, low, no, or no, low, or low actually, carbon. Actually, no, almost half of the energy that we use in this country comes no, from no, natural, no, no. natural gas, no, and most of it comes from You're not listening to what I said, Esther, I make a distinction but between... But that's not a renewable no, no, you're energy. you're not listening to what I'm saying. Make, I make a distinction between the energy that we use in this country that we consume and the energy that we actually generate. Yeah, and it's not from, it's another, from natural gas. Another question would be... Which is not renewable. It's all very well and good us paying the extra £142 a year in order to fund these investments into renewables, which arguably we need to do if we want to see our emissions going down. But globally, this climate crisis is a global issue. Mm. What is the point of yep. us even reaching so uh, this you is know, a question, net zero this is a question when other countries aren't doing the often same? Often posed by the populist right, it says, well, what's the point, given China, given other high-polluting countries, that they need to do far more for anything that we do to be worth it? I would argue all we can control, and this is true in our own personal and private lives, as it is politically on an international mm. scale, all we can do is control what we do first. And if we get our own house in order, we're in a far better position to lead the world as a good example. And I we've mean, done relatively so well in this country, but we need to keep going. Labour have abandoned their 28 billion pledge, right? Yeah. The Tories, this looks like rowing back on net zero to some extent. I'm worried about that. I don't want the hard right, which is a minority in this country, to swamp Can our I politics. Can I ask a question? Can I just ask a question? Define the hard right. Define far right. Define hard, hard right is basically mm -hmm. people who are racist and try and try and filter their racism into our, and their other bigotries into our, polit into our politics, not necessarily by being openly racist, but, say, targeting vulnerable people like asylum seekers mm. relentlessly, pretending that they're this massive, okay. massive We've problem gone for way the country. Off topic. Wait, what's, racist, what's racist about wanting cheaper energy bills? I haven't I'm said... Just, no, I'm, no, I'm no, interested. Well, let me that's... answer the question. Okay. I'm not saying that in itself is racist. Of course it's not. It okay. is coming from the same people who are racist. They want to push this idea mm. that net zero is somehow hugely damaging. And all I'm saying is... Net zero is vital, but we've got to get there in an equitable way and in a way that makes sense. OK, I'm going to go to the calls. Nigel from Warwickshire, what's your thoughts on this? Would you rather have that £142 in your pocket or do you want to invest in our future? Well, it's more than that. It's about 400 quid now. But uh, me being hard right, you, uh, I'm just trying to convey to you that this is one reason why Labour will... Uh, become completely unpopular. The anger will mount, and you'll get, as your gentleman uh, guest says, hard right people like me vote being angry. You know, the the point is net zero is a complete scam, and it will actually impoverish the poor more than they currently are poor. In you what will, way do you, you mean know, it's a scam? Do you... It's a total scam. All right, I'll explain. Point zero four percent. 0.04% of the atmosphere is made of CO2. If you halve that to 0.02%, the plants and crops will die, yep. right? So on top of that, China is building two coal-fired power stations a week. And the gentleman who says, oh, we should lead the world, we currently do. We are only emit less than 1%. So, all right, so is China listening to us? Of course not. Well, Nigel, China, Nigel, you're missing the point. China. We have to bankrupt ourselves to virtue signal so other countries can take the lead, right? Or if not, we're racist. Of course, I get your point. We're all racist. You know, I want this country, the poor, to be uh, wealthier. Now, if you want immigration austerity, austerity, fine. If you want nut, net, nut zero austerity, fine. But the poor Nigel, will rise I, up and rebel. Nigel, I'm they confused. Will... You're arguing on two fronts here. On one hand, you're saying that net zero is a complete sham. And what's the point anyway? Because you've got um, China building power stations. And then on the other hand, you're saying, well, I'm not paying it because it's going to affect the poor the worst. So which is the bigger offence? The fact that we're paying for a scam or the fact that the poor is paying for it? Both. Well, the, it's no, a scam that the poor are paying for. I mean, the poor, I, I, I can understand an argument saying that we have such a, 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 a small impact on a global scale. That's not historically, because obviously we went through an industrial revolution where so we have... We, I've got to punch back or, or push back at least on what Nigel is saying about the, the scam and about CO2 and plants not growing. Listen, we are increasing these gases in the atmosphere, which is 
contributing to global warming. Before we increase those these which, gases, which gases, hang on, let me just no, finish. Which gases? Before we, which methane gases? and CO two. Uh -huh. Before I don't know what you, why you're trying to mock what I'm saying. This is no, let me just finish. I'm this curious. is established science around the world. Mm -hmm. Before we made these increases, which are damaging to our environment and ultimately to us because they are warming the global temperature, we still had plants, Nigel. Look, hold on. Global warming. Did we have plants scary. before no, we on, contributed me... to global warming? No, 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 no. no. You know, the Romans had um, vineyards uh, by Hadrian's Wall. The Romans. The, the fact that the warmer, climate has changed warmer. over time doesn't oh, mean I, it doesn't matter that Nigel, we are changing it. Was, it was warmer in Roman times than now. Okay, Nigel, okay. can I ask you a quick question, really simple one? Do you think that we are currently in a climate crisis? No, it's ah, a complete okay. scam. Well, it's then, in which case, this whole conversation is sort of nil and void for you then. But thank you for your call. Many will disagree with you. Well, the world scientists disagree with you. Yes, him. I know, but Trevor still believes that it's it's not a Published thing. And that's Nigel, his belief. Yeah. Uh, Nigel, sorry. Trevor's next. Trevor, do you agree with Nigel? Do you think that the whole climate crisis is just um, a bit of theatre for politics? No. Um, and the reason I say that is, well... I'm kind of half and half because 20,000 years ago, according to uh, the Planet program on your uh, on the TV, said that uh, Scotland was covered in ice 20,000 years ago. Now, in the scheme of things, that's not a very long time ago. So it's been receding anyway. Okay. Where are you going with is your argument? Never, is, is your argument that the climate has always changed? Pardon? Is your argument that the climate well, has always changed? Well, climate change is... is sorry, I'm getting an echo. Uh, climate change is there. It's a part... It's from, where, from the day the world started through to now and beyond, the climate change is always going to happen. So, Trevor, are you saying um, that we've had no part in that? It's got absolutely nothing to do with the amount of methane that we're kicking out into the atmosphere? No, I'm not saying that, but that's why I'm in conflict with Nigel, because... There is an element to it. Sorry, I can't hear you. No, that's because I'm I'm trying to work out where you're coming from and what your argument is. So, are you saying that we well, shouldn't be investing in green energy? Are you saying we should be investing in green energy? You want the hundred and fifty pounds in your pocket? Well, I I said to your um, chap on the on the phone just now okay. that Esther has got it absolutely right. Okay, I tend to. In, in what way, Trevor? You're a man of few words. Well, she, is say, she is saying that, that there should be a proper plan that the people yeah. of this country okay. can see uh, and, and we can see what's happening. That's... To me, the government has, has panicked and gone to electric vehicles and they are going to be the bane of our, our lives. We're going to regret that. Inter interesting. I, I mean, you, you could very well be right, but the fact that you're asking for a plan, we want to be able to see it. Does that sound no, fair I to you? I said from the very beginning that the risk with implementing into law, which I support, of the net zero ideal, the risk is that we don't quite know how we're going to get there, even though we know we need to get there. Mm -hmm. And I said from the very beginning, we need good policy and we need to make sure that the poorest people in this country don't carry an unfair burden. But the fact that the climate has changed in the past, the fact, for example, that we have had an ice age mm -hmm. does not mean that it doesn't matter that we are impacting on the climate now and that the climate is warming because we know, and the world scientists are in almost overwhelming, well, they are in overwhelming agreement, doesn't mean you won't get a few who disagree. The fact that they overwhelmingly agree should worry us. We shouldn't be listening to Nigel, who's called into <laughs> our show, who tells us that plants are not going to grow in the future. This really matters. It, the, well, these, like, these siren the voices Nigel, are distracting and thing. dangerous. This is why people find your position condescending and annoying, because it's the likes of it's Nigel science. that have to pay for it. Yeah, and I support you are Nigel. Happy, you I support are happy, Nigel you in are that happy, respect. You are happy. To, it's fine for you to take whatever position you do. But when, you. when you actually ask people whether they're willing to pay for it, that's when, it's, that's when the conversation turns, because you actually have people than 10% polled nationally that are actually willing to have their bills go up to pay. If we don't this, pay now, we will all pay scheme. in very significant ways later on. Our children will pay. We will start to pay. There are parts of the world that all are already becoming uninhabitable as a consequence of what we are doing to the climate. Yes, it's painful, but we can't get away from those realities. We cannot put our head in the sand simply because it's painful. I've said and I'll say it again. We need to think these policies through. We need good policy. 
We don't want to virtue signal and we want to protect those who are most vulnerable I mean, in our society. The government... We can't get away from the science. Okay, the government do have specific schemes, but the fact that none of us really know what they are, I think they're involved with insulation, getting heat pumps in. Ask, ask like what that. proportion of our green taxes actually go to those schemes. You'll be shocked. Okay, uh, we've got a few messages on social media. Linda on Facebook says they should be putting a big windfall on companies and taxing the wealthy who have their money in offshore bank accounts, so taxing other people. Stu on Twitter or X says, depends on what they do with the tax. I'm not convinced that it goes straight into the pockets of the Tory donors and energy company shareholders. And Nell on Twitter says, we already pay a daily standing charge to support infrastructure. Surely this should go towards upgrading the system. No need for extra payments for green. Okay, not a lot of people very happy with paying the extra tax then. All right, thank you very much for all your calls on this.